Welcome to Car Perva. I'm Johnny Smith. Today I want to talk about my charger. Not my Dodge Charger, that big 60s muscle car that I'm very proud of that's very bad for the environment, but an environmentally friendly charger. A new purchase of mine. It's this. Yeah. It's an electric motorbike with a name. Don't laugh. It's called an Orenthetic Charger and it's a production motorcycle, maybe one of the earliest mass produced motorbikes from America in the early 70s. And I bought this just before lockdown, having looked for one on and off for years. And I think it's probably one of those electric motorbikes that you've never heard of slash never cared about. And it runs on technology that you might be familiar with, car batteries. So there you have it, basically two really powerful 12 volt car batteries, quite heavy, obviously old lead acid tech, but these, these ones are new. The bike was actually an adaptation of a Taiwanese bike, a piston engine. So this American company bought in a bike called a Gemini SST, great name, um, another great name, removed the engine, built this kind of um, battery tray with these forward controls, and then put the electric tech in, and there's the motor down there, which I think is a Bosch motor. Uh, they were all orange and white. This one's actually been repainted and it should have chrome on it, but the bike was apparently able to do 50 miles on one charge, up to speeds of 30 miles an hour. Now I'm not going to demonstrate that today because it's too early, I haven't registered it on the road, so I can do a little bit of like private road riding, but uh, let's have a closer look. So it's kind of like an electric monkey bike that Honda have never made. Now, if you've watched some of my stuff before, you'll know I own a, a bike called a Moto Chimp, which is a, um, a very small kind of foldable electric bike, which is slightly smaller than this. But you can see the principle was here. Post, post oil crisis in the early 70s, people didn't want big engine stuff. Fuel was incredibly expensive. So they were experimenting. And what's great about this is it's not as crap as I thought it would be. You've got, obviously, it's an ad adaptation, like I said, of an existing bike, a Taiwanese bike. So this is a real fuel tank that is no longer a fuel tank. It's got a, a voltmeter on the top here with a key. And on the other side, there's a plug to plug it in, which was an American plug, a 110 volt plug. Some of them had indicators. They should have had chrome bars, chrome lights, chrome mud guards uh, and you've caught forward controls with no brakes on the pedals so the brakes are like a bicycle up here and here i just became fascinated with one because i thought a bit like my old enfield electric car it's a it's an electric vehicle that's sort of lost in history that nobody seems to know or care about how bad can it be so i thought i'd buy one <laughs> get it registered and take it on the road, especially now where we live in a world where the e-bike world is exploding and the electric motorbike world is only growing because electric motorbikes are perfect things in urban areas and if they don't run on, on fuel, then great. Information on the Orenthetic is a bit sketchy. There's not a big following for them. Obviously, not many people know about them. I took some notes because um, there was a 1974 copy of Popular Mechanics where they reviewed it. Um, and apparently, Orenthetic was experimenting with regen. Uh, during the production of this, they were going to put regen braking on the bike. Um, we're up to 70% using a combination of AC-DC power plants and a solenoid turnoff. So this was back in the early 70s where they were dealing with potential regen. They made these in California. I've actually got the address. I'm sure it doesn't exist anymore. The Orenthetic Corp 828 North Lake Street, Burbank, California. And they also had an Eastern branch, 706 Adams Street in Quincy, Massachusetts. So if anybody knows of those places, contact me. But I think what we're looking at here is, is a setup that's, that's not that foreign to what we have now. You've got a motor down there onto a chain drive and a sprocket on the back here. 
obviously all the weight is really low down. I mean, these, these batteries are a, a vastly improved version of the normal lesser lead acid batteries. These are from a company called Excess Power, uh, an American battery company. Um, but this thing was supposedly able to do 50 miles on one charge. And it says in the, in the literature that if you did a typical commute of 10 miles, it would take an hour to top the charge back up just using a conventional plug. So actually that doesn't seem that bad. Although 12 hours to recharge from zero is quite bad. <laughs> it's in the condition that almost that I bought it in. When the guys at Not Your Average Bike collected it for me, it wasn't running, uh, but we thought it was all there. And the guy that I bought it off called Jim in Birmingham, he'd had it almost since new, uh, but it had always been used as like a pit bike or a field type bike. So it's never been used on the road. And I'm trying to get some of the extra bits that I need, but what's cool is the fact that there's an orenthetic, there should be an orenthetic badge on here on the tank, which I don't have. And this tank should be half uh, white, half orange. The chain guard's got the orenthetic like capital A with a lightning strike on it. I actually think it's quite a cool little, funny little bike. And I happen to really like orange, which helps, because you can only buy it in orange, apparently. Because it's all American, uh, it said it, was a, it weighs 100 pounds without the batteries, and then with the batteries, it weighs 210 pounds. <laughs> so it gives you an idea that obviously the most of the weight was the old school technology lead acid batteries. And the other weird thing was the throttle is just stepped. So you, you essentially don't have a progressive throttle. It's either low speed, which is 12 volt, and then high speed, which is all the power 24 volt. So it's not brilliant to modulate, although I've never actually ridden it. So today I'm just gonna give it a little ride. Don't worry, there'll be more episodes of this once I can get it road registered. I might do some road trips in it. When I say road trip, I don't mean like Charlie Borman spec, but we'll see. I've done enough of that. Let's, let's take it for a ride, shall we? I have absolutely no idea how this is gonna ride, by the way. Luckily, we're on private property. So all I do is flick the key on, got my voltmeter to tell me I have some volts. The throttle has just two positions. This is first, which is 12 volts. Then when I peel it back, it just clicks and picks up really much quicker than you're expecting it to because um, it's, it, it's not a progressive accelerator. The throttle's just two steps. And it goes along really well. It's actually, it's a lot more fun than I expected. So. Some say 30 mile an hour top end. According to the brochure, it's 25. And the main noise that you can hear is actually the, the chain. It's, the noise is more, the noise is more the chain than anything else. And you just, and you just cruise along. It's actually quite a, a nice, comfortable wheelbase. Forward controls, of course you've got your You've got both brakes on the bars. Bars are wide, 31 inches wide. So it feels more mature and more comfortable than a, than a monkey bike. I would say there's a throbbing engine between my legs, but there's actually two heavy duty uh, lead acid batteries. Uh, these are from Excess Power, who I need to say thank you to. Uh, the same batteries, actually, the same battery that I have as a starter battery in my Dodge charger. A very different charger indeed. It's just amazing to think that two heavy due to starter starter batteries could take me 50 miles on one charge 50 miles that's pretty good really isn't it for mid 70s or even early 70s technology i mean we laugh because it looks funny but it is pretty cool <laughs> yeah what is that <laughs> hey <laughs> it's a bite you 
you probably don't know or care uh, about. But... Uh, I've been riding motorcycles for a long time, but I've never, ever seen one of those before. Well, this is why I wanted to sort of show it to you, because we've known one another for ages from magazines and stuff. Yeah. Potsky was the editor of Motorcycle News for how many years? Oh, too long. Uh, 12 years, I think. 12 yeah. years. Yeah. And obviously only recently electric bikes have become credible, I suppose. Yeah, completely. Yeah, with things like Zero and then Ulta, um, Super Soco, stuff like that. There's loads of brands around now, but uh, never seen anything quite like that before. And How fast is it, mister? Well, I've, I've only ridden it it's fairly carefully around <laughs> private property. It's, it, well, on paper, originally it was 30 miles an hour top speed. Uh, 50 mile range wow. on one charge, which is that's amazing. Really yeah, good, that's amazing. Which I thought was really good. I, I don't know if that was true. It was in 1974, um, and then it, it, it it's a weird throttle because it's it's stepped. Mm -hmm. It's not progressive. Right. So it's 12 volt as like the low, and then it clicks into 24. So does it just spin up, or is it does it feel quite controllable? Spinning up this. <laughs> <laughs> not, Maybe later. I'm not going to be getting fully crossed up or wheeling, I, I'm pretty sure, anytime soon. Be, when, I, when I get it road registered, I'll let you have a go. That'd be amazing. I'd love that, yeah. I, I'm getting on it like I, <laughs> like I know where I'm going. I'm actually just going to ride across this field because it's not road legal. Anyway, thank you for watching Car Pervert. Um, if you like this video or you know something about this bike or you know someone that's got one, let me know in the comments. And uh, Patreons, thank you very much for supporting me. If you don't know what Patreon is, have a look at the link. Bye. This is the bit where you wait for a really loud <laughs> engine, but there isn't one. I just click that switch. Do you need I a flamethrower? I just do this. That's it. Actually, can I just stop you there? Because this isn't the end of the video. Because in a very, very strange twist, about two days before we filmed this, a chap none other than Charlie Borman, probably the world's most famous television motorbike adventurer, put a picture on Instagram of a barn find or anthetic charger saying, I don't know what it is, but I found it and I might buy it. And Potsky, that guy there, is friends with Charlie and he put me in touch with Charlie to say, you need to buy this and you need to speak to my mate Johnny. And so here's how it went. I, I, I'm a bit freaked out by the fact that when I got my bike, I'd been keeping it a secret for a while, and I'd yeah. I'd been looking for one for for ages, and then, like two days before I do the video, with Potsky, you put something on social media about finding one in a barn, and not really knowing what it was. Yeah. He messages me to say, "Have you seen what what Charlie Borman's found?" And I was like, "Of all the people in the world, who who could find a long lost, forgotten." Uh, electric motorcycle from 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 the the, the the mists of time. It's only Charlie Borman, one of the best known TV explorers on motorcycles. I just think it was brilliant. I couldn't stop laughing. No, no, it is it is strange. I mean, I mean, and and well, I can't talk about it now. But but in September, you'll you'll see why it it it, uh, it makes it makes so much sense for me to. To, to it. Actually, Charlie, I'll stop you there because since we recorded this Zoom call, you've now been able to reveal to the world that you've done a 13,000 mile road trip for an Apple TV series which comes out on September the 18th called The Long Way Up with your mate Ewan McGregor, whoever he is. But you've done it on electric Harley Davidson's Harley Live Wires. And, uh, yeah. And how, how, uh, um, appropriate it is that, that I found that, that little bike but you know for me the, the, the excitement was that was so I had nothing to do with it and, and then we had a very brief conversation and if you if you could tell me a little bit about the bike because I don't really know very much about it at all well it's it's a bike which was developed I think and sold during the oil crisis in the states yeah. uh, so what 73 so, so 74 75 that kind of thing yeah and what they did is the the frame and the, the the basic motorbike was an import from Taiwan, so it's a Taiwanese bike that they took the engine out of and adapted the frame for that tray, the battery tray, and then uh, marketed it as an American bike, um, sold only in orange, and called the Orange you know, Setting. The interesting thing is, what I think is it's interesting you should say that because it's quite clever. Because my first thought that it was a it was a it was a Honda monkey bike. Mm. And it's been converted. 
yeah. that was my first thought. Yeah. And 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 I can I now I get it because if it's come from if it's come from Taiwan, then and seventy five or so like that, you know, the monkey bike was was so popular. Then I can understand they kind of they obviously must have kind of sort of imitated the the look of it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, but um, and, and got I just can't believe that it's, it's so. I've got the guy. I, I've seen a photo. You've sent you sent me a photo of yours, which is which is all done up now and, and in pretty good shape. But you bought yours already sprayed and and done up. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I've actually. I mean, I won't bore you with it, but I've actually bought. I bought one several years ago, in in the states, and then the the, the people yeah. ran away with my money and never never shipped it to me. So, no. so this is my second attempt at buying an Orenthetic charger. So, and normally they're, they're not for sale in the UK. I've seen one for sale in the UK in three years. But my thought was that if I could get this going, you know, I live in I live in in central London, or just on just on the edge of central London on the river, and um, I the, the idea would just be to use it to go to the shop, the local shop, to pop down to the local cinema, to to, to you can even ride it into the cinema and leave it in the in the uh, in the, book, the the guys at the, at the cinema here have said that they would they would have no problem about me leaving it inside because really? there's no engine, there's no oil, there's no no there's nothing, and I could just plug it in yeah while uh, while I'm watching the movie. I'm hoping that I can help you get your orenthetic sorted, and then we'll go for like a really pathetic ride out. How about that? Yeah. Well, listen, I'm I'm getting lithium batteries and a more powerful motor, so no. So, are you? No. Are you going resto mod? No, no, no. I, I, I was contemplating and, and uh, putting up because I'd, I'd love to sort of sit there and sit beside a sports bike and and um, and the guy looks at you going yeah yeah whatever. whatever and then you're just twisting it and you know that first up to that first twenty miles an hour you know just blitzing him <laughs> to her, that would be fantastic. Know, yeah, just sit there and then come back to the next traffic lights. Now listen, tell me, have you have you ridden yours? I've ridden it quite briefly, maybe a mile on private property. Yeah. It's surprisingly good, Charlie. It's surpri- Yeah, it it was better than I was expecting. I mean, I've ridden it's a it's a bit longer and a bit bigger than a monkey bike, so it's a bit more comfortable than a monkey bike actually. Yeah. And it and it's not a progressive throttle. You probably know it's just it's just two switches, Tw- two switches. twelve volt and then twenty four volt, and so you can hear it just go click and then click. And then once it's on 24 volt, it's just up to VMAX, and that's kind of it, really. I'm using the same guy who, who who's, who's, who's done yours up, and what's the company called again? Um, not uh, not your average bikes. Not your average. Not your average bikes. Yeah, not John. Average, I love that name. I just think that's fantastic. They're, John. John from Not Your Average Bikes. Yes, it's just, they're really, really good. Well, they were a bit shocked when I when I persuaded them to, to do my bike. But because they're zero dealers and they, they, they work on a lot of electric bikes now, I, th- I thought, well, what, 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 better, what better person to deal with it? Is, have you owned an electric bike prior to the Orenthetic Charger? Um, no, this is my first. Brilliant. It's my first. It's, this is my second, actually. This is my second electric motorcycle. I've got another one called a Moto Chimp. Uh, in fact, I'll bring it when I when when I come and do a we'll do a yes. like rubbish ride around or whatever we call it a EV ride out. I'll bring it with me. Well, we need to get ours UK registered, don't we? I need to get mine registered. You need to get yours registered. Drum roll. I've even got one of these for you. I'm going to reproduce for you. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's bit of, superb. Well, I, would, I would love it. A bit of bedtime so reading. Lovely. Well, lovely to speak to you. Thank you, and, Charlie. Uh, Thanks for your time. And, and fantastic. And thank you for all your help. I really appreciate it. That's all right. I just, I, I'm still, I'm still shocked and amazed, like I said, that of all the people in the country, in the world, <laughs> it, it, it was destiny that you found that bike in that shed. Yeah, no, it was. Listen, you're too kind. <laughs> anyway, listen, have a lovely, uh, have a lovely weekend and, and I'll see you on the, on the Orenthetics. Well, take care, Charlie. Thank you very much.